Hey friends, how are you today? I'm so excited about this lesson and I know I say that every single time. It's just because I love teaching art lessons because it's so much fun. Today our book is, or today we, our project is going to be inspired by this book called The Wide Mouth Frog. Now, this book was a gift to my children from some very good friends of ours, and my children are 20 and 23, so this book has seen a lot of kids read it, so you'll notice that some of the pop-ups don't work as well as they should, but that's okay. It just shows that this book was well-loved and read lots of times. Now, this book is written by Keith Faulkner and illustrated by Jonathan Lambert. That means that Jonathan Lambert did the pictures. The illustrator is the person that does the pictures. Now, as we read this book, let's read to listen and see who the wide mouth frog meets, because at the end of the story, we're going to talk about who he meets along the way. The wide mouth frog. Oh, here's our first pop-up page. I'm a wide mouth frog and I eat flies, said the wide mouth frog, shooting out his long, sticky tongue. And look what's on his tongue. And look what he's looking at. As he hopped along, he met a blue feathered bird. I'm a wide mouth frog and I eat flies, said the wide mouth frog. What do you eat, bird? I eat wriggly worms and slugs, replied the bird, snapping his pointy beak. You can see his beak sticks up. Next, the wide mouth frog met a furry brown mouse. I'm a wide mouth frog and I eat flies, said the wide mouth frog. What do you eat, mouse? Oh, I eat crunchy seeds and juicy berries, replied the mouse, wriggling her whiskers. Ooh, look at this. The wide mouth frog was still catching flies when he saw the big green alligator. I'm a wide mouth frog and I eat flies, said the wide mouth frog. What do you eat, alligator? I eat delicious wide mouth frogs, replied the alligator, showing his sharp, pointy teeth. Can you see his teeth? And can you see his mouth open and close? Mm, I wonder how the wide mouth frog feels now. The wide mouth frog stopped catching flies and gulped. Ooh. Then he puckered his lips and made his mouth as small as possible. Oh, you don't see many of them around, do you? He said, and he leapt into the pond with a Wasn't that a great story? Now remember at the beginning of the story I said, try to remember who the wide mouth frog meets along the way. Let's see if you can remember who he met first. Remember we were introduced to the wide mouth frog and he likes to eat flies. Who did he meet first? Can you remember? Oh, that's right, the blue feathered bird. And who did he meet after the blue feathered bird? Can you remember? The furry brown mouse. And who did he meet after the furry brown mouse? <gasps> he met the big green alligator. Look how his mouth opens and closes. Okay, I love that story. And today, what we're going to do is we are going to draw the wide mouth frog. I told you that our art project today was going to be inspired by that book. And today, I'm just going to turn the lights back on. Thanks for being patient there. When I had the lights on, um, they made the pictures. There was like a glare on the pictures, and I wanted you—I wanted to make sure you could see all the pictures as well as possible. So I turned off the light. 
So today when we do our artwork, we're going to be using the elements of art. Remember the elements of art are the ingredients that artists use to put their work together to make their picture or their work of art. So we'll be using the element of line because we're going to be using lines when we draw our frog. And then when our lines meet, they're going to enclose different kinds of shapes. And so we're going to be using shapes when we make our project. And then of course we'll be using color. So let me show you what our project is going to look like. Here's our wide mouth frog. And there he is with his long sticky tongue and his wide mouth. So we're going to use lines when we draw our frog. And then when those lines close, they're going to form different shapes. And then finally we'll use color. So what will you need for this project? Well, you will need a piece of paper. You will need a Sharpie. Um, you will need some scissors eventually, a glue stick eventually, here's the glue stick. You'll need a little piece of tape eventually because we are going to be taping that tongue on. I'll show you the tricky way we're going to do that. You'll need a pencil to draw your frog and you'll need some things to color with. And we'll talk about how to color your frog when we're finished drawing our frog. Okay, I'm going to draw my frog when I draw with you. I'm going to draw it with a Sharpie so that you can follow along and see it really easily. Now remember, if I'm drawing and you need to stop and pause the video to catch up, that is totally fine. And the other thing you can do, remember, is you can draw it on a piece of scrap paper while you listen to me, and then you can draw it again for yourself, okay? Just like we do at school. Okay, so... If you look at our frog, our frog is really big. So he's going to be taking up most of the paper. So we're going to draw our frog nice and big. Okay. So we're going to start, put your hand on your paper, and we're going to start um, a little ways in, about a finger in, and not quite halfway up because we want to leave room. Let me show you the picture. Okay. We are going to start with this line right here and we want to leave room to make our whole frog, okay? So we want to start maybe down here and move your finger in, okay? So you can see how far I am from the bottom of my paper. Let me just put the camera down a little bit, okay? Okay, so I'm going to start at the bottom of my paper and we're going to make a big upside down U, just like that, okay? That's going to be our frog's body. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add those big eyes. So go to the top of your frog's head and you're going to add a half circle. And that's the outside of his eye. And then we'll make a little inside part like that. And then we're going to make his pupil. And you might want to look a little circle in there for the highlight. And when we color this, we won't color that. That'll be the highlight or where the light's reflecting on his eyes. Now we're going to go over to the other side and we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to make a half circle, okay, and then we're going to make another half circle inside that, and then we're going to make his pupil, okay? All right. The next thing we need to do is we need to make his hind legs, the back part of his leg. So what we're going to do is we're going to start a little bit below the eye, and we're going to make a curved line that goes up out, around, and meets the bottom of the line that you made for the U. Okay, so I'm going to go a little bit below the eye, and I'm going to go up, out, around, and down to the bottom. Now we have his hind legs done. Okay, now we're going to draw some feet. So what we're going to do now is we're going to draw these back feet. To draw the back feet, what you'll do is you'll start where your hind leg meets the bottom of your body and you're going to do a little curved line out. Then one, two, three rainbows and then join back up. That's the one foot. Now we're going to go to the other side and do the same thing. Make a curved line, one, two, three rainbow lines and then join it back up to the top. Now we're ready to make our front legs. Okay, so now we're going to be ready to make those front legs. 
to make the front legs, we're going to go, well, leave lots of room for your mouse. So we're going to go a little bit less than halfway down. Draw two straight lines. That'll be one leg. And then draw two straight lines. That'll be the other leg. And now we need to draw the front feet. So what we're going to do is draw a diagonal line coming out. And one, two, three rainbow lines, another diagonal line to close that. For the other leg, we're going to, or the other foot, we're going to do the same thing. Draw a diagonal line, and if they touch, that's fine. And one, two, three rainbow lines, and close it up with another diagonal line. Now, our frog needs to have a body on the bottom finished up. So, what I want you to do is think about how this is going to go around like this. So show you on my paper, we're going to draw this line right here. And that line is behind our feet. So you need to think about how that frog is going to curve. In fact, is I actually like to turn my paper sideways. And I'm going to draw my line and jump over the feet because they're in front of the body. And then continue my line and jump over the feet because they're in front of the body. And then finish it up. And there's the bottom of our frog. Now, he is missing the most important thing right now. Let's give him that big, wide mouth. So he is a wide mouth frog. He has a really big mouth. So we are going to go back up to the top, draw a straight line for his big mouth, and then close it up with a curve. There's his big mouth. Now, you don't have to give your frog teeth if you don't want to. I did just for fun just because I thought it was fun. Okay, so there's my teeth. Okay, and if you want, you can give your frog some speckles on his knees. You could even give him some speckles on his forehead if you want. Oh, and I always like to draw these little sticky pads here just for fun too. Remember, this is a cartoon frog. Obviously, frogs don't have teeth like that. This isn't trying to be a realistic frog, so you can do what you want with it. Okay, so there's our wide mouth frog. I'm pretty happy with him. He looks fun. The next thing we need to do is draw something for him to be sitting on. Right now, he's just floating in the middle of the paper. So we're going to give him a lily pad to sit on. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to give him a lily pad. So what we're going to do is he's sitting on the lily pad, so we're going to make a curved line out. I just started sort of anywhere right here you can start. I started my lily pads round so it's going to go off the paper so I drew a curved line then I'm going to do a V because lily pads have that little cut in them and then I'm going to close it and that's the line of the lily pad. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side draw a curved line make a V and then curve it off the page and there's our lily pad. Now our lily pad is floating in some water, so we have to make some water back here. So I'm just going to draw a line there, and a line there, and there's our water. Okay, so we have our wide mouth frog, and then we have our lily pad, and then we have our water. And then our wide mouth frog is probably going to try to catch a fly, because remember, he's a wide mouth frog, and now he likes to eat delicious flies. So to make my fly, all I did was draw an oval and color it in and then give him some wings. Sometimes people like to make lines to show movement and those lines can show where the fly has been. Okay, so now we're done with our drawing and we're ready to do our coloring. So what I did was I colored the frog with markers and then... I colored the lily pad with crayons and the water with crayons and I did a really light, light blue for the sky. And this is why I did this. I wanted the frog to be a bright color so that's why I used markers. If I would have used the same color marker for my lily pad, there would be no contrast. You wouldn't really see my wide mouth frog standing out. He would kind of blend in with his surroundings. Now in a real pond, he probably would want to blend in with his surroundings because he doesn't want to be eaten. But for this piece of art, I want him to stand out. 
So I use markers for him and then I used crayons for the lily pad and the water. Now, when I used the markers, I, well, I colored the frog first. Now, remember he's a cartoon frog, so you can color him any way you want. I kind of wanted to color him a little bit like the book because that was our inspiration, but you can color him any way that you want. So once, and one thing I want to show you is I didn't just pick markers out and start coloring. I sort of did some experimenting. So I had one that I made that I just wanted to experiment with. And you can see that I tried different kinds of combinations with my markers. And I decided that I did not want to layer my markers. You can layer your markers. When I say layer your markers, for example, I mean you can color with one color and then color over it with another color. But I decided that even though it did change the color a little bit, you can see that if I don't layer it, it's a little bit darker. I didn't really like that. So I decided to color him just with straight marker color. So I just used the green, the brown, the yellow, and the black. Now for the lily pad, I did something different. For the lily pad, Remember I said I wanted my frog to really show up, right? So if I colored my frog, and of course I'm not going to color the whole frog while you're standing here or sitting here watching, but let's just say there's my frog foot. Now I'm ready to color my lily pad. If I would color my lily pad with this, there would be no contrast. So I chose two colors of green to use for my lily pad. And you can layer crayons. So for example, I took this color and I colored my lily pad all with this color first. And let me show you another trick. You know how your crayons kind of can get dull? Well, you can peel your crayons and you can use a regular sharpener. This is just a regular pencil sharpener I have, but I only use it for crayons. So make sure that if you're going to sharpen your crayons that you ask somebody before you start using just any old sharpener, okay? So you can just put your crayon in there and voila! It's just like new. And you don't want crayon shavings on the carpet, so make sure that you get permission before you sharpen crayons, okay? And look, there we go. And so now I can use that crayon to get into these little nooks and crannies that are under here. Okay, so once I colored the lily pad with this color, then I layered this color on top and this color kind of filled in the areas that didn't get covered the first time and just gives it some more interest because you've got two colors there. Okay, so for the water, I did the same thing. First I colored with some blue and for the water I actually did a little bit, let me move these markers, I did First I colored it very lightly with my blue, but then I went over, I'll color it very lightly so you can see. First I colored it very lightly, but then I went over it and I did some swirls just to give it a little texture because we know water isn't always still. Okay. Then when I was done with that, I took a green color because ponds are usually not just a pure blue color. They usually have a little bit of green algae floating in there or something going on. So I went over it with some green just to give it a little bit more interest. For the sky, I took um, a peeled crayon and I just went like this for the sky. Oh, excuse me. So you can just hold it with your pincher fingers like this and rub it on your paper. Okay. All right. So now let's talk about how we do that tongue. Okay. Now you can leave your frog just like this colored if you don't want to make the tongue. If you want to make the tongue, you're going to need some scrap paper. So I just have little pieces of paper left over from other projects because, you know, I never throw anything away. So um, to make your tongue, look at the shape of the tongue. Okay, all you need to do is draw that shape on a piece of paper. I chose red because it contrasted really nicely with the green. And you can just draw your mouth shape, or sorry, your tongue shape, and cut it out. Or if you don't even think you need to draw it, 
don't draw it. Okay. All right. So I've cut that out. The next thing you're going to do, because we want it to be curly, is you're going to take a pencil and wrap it around, wrap the paper around almost to the end, but not quite. Leave a little bit there. Okay. Then you'll unwrap it and you'll have your curly tongue. And then we're just going to fold this back part down. This back part is going to go right inside your teeth right here. Now, for this part, you are going to need to ask an adult to help you because you will need to use an X-Acto knife to make a slit here. You can use scissors if you want, but it's a little bit easier to use a knife. If we were at school, I would help you do this, and we would just use scissors. But it's a little bit easier to use this knife. And all you need to do, well, you're not doing this. You're asking a parent to do this or somebody that's helping you. All you need to do is mark where you need to slit it, okay? Actually, you know what? I just thought of this. I can't believe I didn't think of this before because if we were at school, this is what we do. Just take your scissors and slit right on that line. I folded it, but I didn't fold it. Um, I didn't press it. I just folded it, and now I have a slit. You can see my finger coming through there. And then you can just finish by slitting over there and splitting over there. All right, so guess what? No need for this. So don't bother anybody by asking them for it. Okay, so remember, all I did was folded the paper and gave it a slit. Okay. And now we have a little slit on the paper. Now, take this part that we folded. You still might need some help getting this through here, but then again, you might not. Stick it in just like that. And then on the back, you'll see where that little tab is. Just take a little piece of tape, or you can even use just a glue stick, and tape it on. And then you have your tongue. Now, of course, I had to go oh, just a little bit further, and I wanted to stick a fly on the end of my tongue. So all I did was cut out a black circle, and then I cut out two wings. I didn't even, I just cut them out. Actually, I shouldn't say circle, should I, friends? This isn't a circle. That's an oval. So there's the fly's body. And then I folded my paper in half so I could have two wings with just one cut. And there we go. And then what I did was I didn't want my wings to be so it looked like there's only one. I wanted it to, to look like there's two. So I unfolded it and just refolded it a little bit. And then you're going to need to glue this on. So a little bit of glue. Stick your fly on. And a little bit of glue on the fly. Stick them on your tongue. And there you have it. The fly's on the tongue. Okay, so this is our project. I hope that you have fun with this project. I think it's a really fun lesson. And you can see the shadow that his tongue is making over here. Turn this off and see if it's better. There we go. Okay. And friends, if you make this project, um, send me a picture. I would love to see it. And have a great rest of your day. Miss you. Bye.